All right, everybody, welcome back to the Move Podcast, brought to you each and every day this year by Ventum Bikes. My road bike, my NS1, my gravel bike, my GS1. If I keep hanging out with Allie, I'm going to need the new bike, which is the ES1, because she's a hell of a lot stronger than I am. And we're going to get into some of the numbers of wattage and things like that later on in the show, because we got a great letter or a great email from a listener uh, talking about some of the wattages that that these ladies are putting out. Pretty amazing. But so I will be <laughs> I will be needing the e-bike uh, if this keeps up. Special offer for our listeners. Head on over to VentumRacing.com slash the move. Use the code we do at checkout. And uh, that gets you 10% off. We also have a, uh, a Ventum Rider of the Day. We didn't have one yesterday. Now, if my dumb ass can just pull it up. HR, where'd it go? There you are. Okay, our rider. This is a cool one. Our rider of the day. I always love how people come up with their Instagram <laughs> handles. <laughs> this is Sonia Manda. Sonia Manda 3. What really matters is riding your bike with passion and sharing that experience with others, finding inspiration in the details and feeling peace in the never-ending horizon. So much to take in, so much left to explore. Cycling has a massive positive impact on my life and will never and I'll never take that for granted. Real simple. Cycling is freedom. Sonia Manda 3, thank you very much for that. Send us Amen. if you want to you want to be one of the riders of the day, just uh, follow at Ventum Racing and at WeDo.team and tag uh, hashtag Ventum Rider of the Day. I'm figuring out this social media stuff. Are you? Or do you have something for that? <laughs> <laughs> we wait till you see what we put up later. And it, it, when I watch how this stuff unfolds, like putting together clips and the music and like, ugh, I'm, I'm, my brain explodes. But uh, we were talking about stage five. Mel, where'd we go? Stage five from Bar le Duc to Saint Dié des Vosges. <laughs> Bar le Duc to Saint Dié des Vosges. I mean, thank God we have somebody. Uh, imagine we try to say that. You can speak French. <laughs> yeah. We're going to kick off the show today. As we, as we teased out yesterday, um, we have a, a really, really special guest. The, the first ever winner of the Women's Tour, Mariana Martin, uh, coming to us live from Boulder, Colorado. By the way, Mariana, um, my daughter goes to see you. And, and my, uh, my much, much, much better half also is a, is a buff. So. Oh. Oh my goodness. Uh-huh. Can I fangirl yet? Or, do yeah. I, do I not get a fangirl yet? No, you can fangirl out. But just to clarify, because Allie, you've been saying 1985 for a couple of days. Yeah, I uh, was doing okay. some research. 1984. Not that it matters. 1984. Such a pioneer. It does matter because that's also the first year the women race the marathon and right. bikes in the Olympics. So it does matter. And there was one other, which we did discuss, uh, 1955, kind of a Tour of Normandy exposition, but 1984. So you guys, fangirl alert right here. Marianne Martin <laughs> coming on stage. I can't believe she actually answered my text message, but Lance like <laughs> really put that on me. But um, I was so excited and I've been following her for years. But uh, the first ever winner of the Women's Tour de France. So yeah. bomb. Like, this is amazing. Amazing. Huge deal. Welcome, Marianne. Sorry, I I'm, I get in trouble for being too emotional. So I need a waterproof <laughs> makeup sponsor on this show ASAP. I completely love it and so glad to be here. Well, welcome. Um, Looking at some of the old images, we have a few of the old that we pulled up. Um, some of the old images, just classic. I mean, I love old cycling images, but um, I mean, here we got the hair nets. You've got the cables coming out of the top of the brakes. Here's, of course, winning on the Champs Elysees. Um, oh, oh, she is how focused. How tough you looking there? Oh, and look at and, and this is what's interesting is and if you dig down, so this you guys rode as a national team. You see the shorts, uh, Etazuni, which is, of course means United States and French. So this was as as opposed to what we see now in, in both pelotons when when it's a a corporate backed uh, structure. This was a national team structure. That's right. Yeah. And uh, I loved having that. I yeah. loved it that way. But I understand it's not it might not be sustainable. So it's going to go to sponsors. But it was wonderful to race for the U.S. There are still there's still I don't know if you guys know that there's there is a move, not a movement, but there are plenty of folks out there that wanted to go back to a national team setup. Which You're is, kidding, really? No, I'm not kidding. Oh, well, I've, I've but this is that. cycling, so a lot of things are backwards. So, the, <laughs> <laughs> no, that that I, you do hear that from time to time. I, I and I don't personally think we're going back, but it's cool to see. Uh, just in and it's it's obviously highlighted there on the shorts that this was a um, there wasn't a an SD Works or 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 a Moby Star or a Jumbo Visma. It was you're just racing for your country. Well, it was basically like that through the '90s. Yeah. I mean, mid '90s. 
I raced the, for the national team. I'm super mm -hmm. proud of racing for Team USA, and we won the Giro d'Italia um, for the national team with Mara Abbott. So yeah. it is a it is a thing in women's cycling. But Marianne, like this is enough about us. We actually want to talk to you. <laughs> like, tell us, <laughs> tell us what it was like um, in your lead up. And I think that was an Olympic qualifying year. I think you were dealing some health issues, and you got to win the first not swearing boomstick. <laughs> I put the swear jar somewhere not next to me so I don't <laughs> offend my mother. But you won the first Women's Tour de France. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Well, it was. And, you know, just as as I hear you say, it was the first year for women in the marathon in the Olympics. Was that true? And uh, I know yes, it was yeah, for cycling. Yep. Joan, Joan Benoit Samuelson won the, mm -hmm. the very first ever women's marathon. And can you stand it that it was only, you know, that many years ago that women were included in in the Olympics for those things. I mean, when I think about it, it, it is just a little bit mind boggling. We totally but, agree. Yeah. I, when I heard though, that there was going to be a women's tour de France, it was the year before I, that's all I wanted to do. I mean, I just couldn't imagine anything better. And you know, the Olympics great one day, right. I, I mean, there's, you know, that's a great thing, but the Olympics or worlds, I just wanted to do the tour de France. So that was my goal for a long time. You are a woman after my own heart. I, I've, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> the Olymp I mean, I get it. The Olympics are, are very, very important for uh, a lot of people around, around the globe. But the tour is the tour, right? And that's, I mean, the yellow jersey to me, at least in cycling, is, is, a, is 100 times bigger than a gold medal. Not to diminish any of that, but it, it is our F1. It's, our, it's, our, it's the, sort of the granddaddy. Um, what's cool, too, and because as I look at this uh, article that just came out today on CNN, there is a picture of you and Laurent Fion on, 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 of course, he won the men's race, you won the women's race here on the podium. And as I look at you here on the Zoom, uh, you have the trophy. That is the trophy right behind you, is it not? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yes. And they don't do them like that now, but it's definitely a piece of art. Um, I got, you know, I, I can tell you how they do them now. Cause somewhere around here in storage, I got seven of them. They, they do look a little different. <laughs> I know, but they're so gorgeous. They're, you can't just keep them in storage. No. I, well, that's a, that's for another podcast, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I want to just, <clears throat> I, the, the quote that you have in this article is unbelievable. He says, and I quote you and you, you can uh, elaborate, but it says in France, they didn't even think we would finish says Marianne Martin. Uh, that was the word on the street, or that was the overall feeling. And of course, we all knew that we would. <laughs> yeah, people are silly if they <laughs> yeah. think they I mean, can't do stuff. Um, you know, I, women are way more capable. And when you think about the fact that that was the first year that they had women and also in cycling and running, it is an overall feeling that women are less capable than men and it was great to be the first one it, it was great to do something that nobody knew what it was going to be like and so everything was fabulous everything was unknown and and there were no expectations right and when you say fabulous though um i th believe you can correct me if i'm wrong you bought your you were late call up to the race you were suffering with anemia um, you bought your own ticket to Paris or France, at least. I, um, and you didn't have a mechanic while you guys were racing. Lance, have you ever not had a mechanic in your life? Uh, never, never. Okay. <clears throat> never. That's right. I, I bought my ticket to New York and then the Federation paid for it to Paris. So, um, and I came directly from the Olympic trials, but yes, I was the last one chosen because I wasn't riding that well. And even in the end of May at the East Coast Self Series, which are big national races, I, I couldn't even finish the races. But I was on a path. I mean, I wanted to do the tour. And at that point, I'd put my sights on the next year. And I just got really scientific about my training and resting. And uh, I turned around really fast. Hmm. So... When there was a spot left on the team, I drove down to the Olympic Training Center and begged Eddie for that one spot. <laughs> wow. And for the listener and viewer who doesn't know, so we're talking about Eddie Borsevich, the, the, the longtime Olympic coach. Long, yeah, Eddie very, B. very Eddie B., mm -hmm. otherwise known as Eddie B., was, was uh, I, of course, rode for his team in 
1991 was a, a, a Polish coach, came over to the U.S., coached so many greats, yourself included, Greg LeMond. Rebecca uh, Twig. Rebecca Twig. He was, yeah, and mm -hmm. unfortunately passed of COVID uh, probably 18 months ago, but was, uh, was definitely a legend. But I could, I could, just to your point, like, Trying to convince Eddie B of anything, <laughs> it is, uh, uh, it's no, no small feat. But we get a lot of training questions. Um, and I mean, I know you do Lance through the email and Mari as well. And people want to all be professional cyclists and be like Marianne and win the Tour de France and like yourself, of course. Mm. And, but Marianne, I think I heard that you said you rode less than anybody else because you were very efficient with your training. I'm a big proponent of rest. And I think rest is the other secret weapon. So Andy Pruitt taught me about training early on. And I love Andy so much. <laughs> yeah, he's the best. And lucky for me, he was dating my best friend. So I had uh, a lot of res a lot of access to him. But he taught me about going hard and then resting. And I was really efficient with my training. Every time I got on my bike, there was a reason. There was a, a goal, whether it was speed work or power. I didn't do that much endurance because women's races weren't that long. But how long I were the races? Go, what's that? How long were they? 30 to 50 miles, oh, I would wow. say. Oh, wow. okay. And they were on and the actually finishing circuits that the guys did, right? Back then? We fit, we did the last, well, yeah, we did the last 60 or 70 kilometers of the men's race. Mm -hmm. And so when the races, when the roads were closed, they were closed. So up the mountains, there was huge crowds and everybody that was going to be there for the men's race was there for us as well. That had to be so exciting to be able to ride with those crowds and everything for the women's race. And I'm curious about what it was like for you to, to go back to France this time and get to see what it's like for the women now. It, it was really fun to go back. Um, you know, when we did the race, we did 18 stages and this year they're doing nine, but they're on the board, you know, they're, they're on the board. So that's good. And it's way more technical now than it was. I mean, as far as they have radios, their coach can tell them who's in the break. I mean, we had to know where every person was in the Peloton. And if that person's right there, if she's a sprinter or a climber, do I worry about her? Do I keep track? You know, we had to think about a million things when we were riding, which not better or worse, like chocolate or vanilla ice cream. They're both great, but I loved how we had to. <laughs> That's the best. There's another boomstick right there. <laughs> so, but you still had a caravan and everything with the, with the races, correct? I mean, you still had your director back there or, or. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And no mechanic. Well, so. <laughs> We didn't have a mechanic at first. And one of the girl's husbands was on the trip. And so he kind of took over and we didn't need that much, but we didn't have anything. We didn't even have gears bigger than a 19. Oh we were going to ask you about that. <laughs> we were looking at your gears. Lance has never felt more needy a day in his life. I don't think. Yeah, I mean, okay. no, it's, 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 it's consider going up. Some, these climbs are that steep and, and uh, yeah, I know in probably a 42 in the front. So 42, 19. Yeah. I mean, talk about mashing the gears. I mean, I like mashing, so, but I can't not. even imagine. I don't even know. Yeah, how we we got I tell you what, we'll, uh, we'll replace <laughs> the gears on your blaze. We'll replace the gears on your bike <laughs> for just a couple of weeks. You roll, roll around with 4219 there in pedal Luma. Let us just write us back and let us know how that went for you. Yeah. Yeah. I'll let Marianne know. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yep. So your, uh, yeah, Lance was no, go ahead. Oh, uh, your favorite, like. I guess of what does this mean to women cycling as we look forward, as we wrap up here and um, move on to the stage, but what is like, how do you see women's what you accomplished, which of course, fangirling hard again, but, <laughs> and what does this look like for women cycling in the future and what you witnessed when you were in uh, Paris this year? Well, one thing, I mean, as I said, I loved racing for the national team, but it's gotta be sustainable and they need to have sponsors and then the sponsors need to get what they need. So I, applaud Zwift and the other sponsors for stepping up and having that faith in women and putting the energy back there. And I am convinced it's going to keep going this time because it, it is such a great market and it's, it's the perfect time for well, 
Sponsor. And Marianne, we, we looked at some of the TV numbers yesterday and quoted them on the show. I, I don't think we have to speculate. I think this is here. I mean, we're millions of people are tuning in live on television. You see, if you're watching the race, you see the amount of people on the roadside. This is, we're here to stay. I mean, I, I, and, and of course, you know, thanks to folks like you that paved the way, but the numbers don't, you know, as I say all the time, <laughs> men lie, women lie, <laughs> and numbers don't to quote the great Jay-Z. So the numbers are there, which yeah. is all, like, we're, we're, this is not a one and done. And so it's, 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 and, and I tell the girls all the time, the ladies, is that bad? If I, said, I don't care. I tell my boss, I tell my bosses all the time, like watching, <laughs> I, I've never watched this much women cycling mm -hmm. and it's, it's a different, it's a different race. It's a different style of race. And it's, I gotta be honest, it's exciting. It's even more exciting than a lot of days. I watch this boys race. <laughs> yeah, See, I said boys, I watched the boys race. And I'm like, <laughs> this 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 action is is nonstop. I love it. Maybe the pillow between us is because you're so excited and not just me. Ooh. Whoa! I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that, Marianne. We uh, really appreciate you um, so much. You are an icon, a legend, and you have had a really hard road, and you blazed a whole trail for us to follow. And uh, we are hundred percent supportive. Marianne, do you? St you I, so I got, I, can I ask one more question? <laughs> oh, sure. um, do you still ride? I do. I just started again a few years ago, um, but I have a fun group of friends that goes to Europe or someplace on a bike trip every year. So okay, because I was just selfishly, you know, fanboy here. Like when Ooh. I come, like you know, maybe parent weekend down at CU. Can can we hook up and go for a little pedal? <laughs> Yeah, but you, you better start training for it now. <laughs> Trust me. I got a lot of training to do. I know. <laughs> when that, that e-bike comes out for your Ventums, well, yeah. you can ride with yeah. Marianne. No, I would, I would love that. I would love that. Uh, and congratulations that was, uh, on your Hall of Fame. Absolutely. Too. That was yeah. awesome. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Can we just it's, see the trophy? Can we just bring it closer? Yeah, you bet. Uh, I, I keep staring at it, and you're right. I'm gonna I'm gonna dust some of these off. Oh, and she wears cut off. She is a girl after oh, my own heart. Dear. Oh, <laughs> no. we got, uh, you, oh folks, I just fell in love, folks. You should be watching the show. I have a few things in it. You know, it keeps things. Yeah, but um, that, that is, is gorgeous. So cool. is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And I always wanted the light to shine down. And so, Lance, you could set all yours up with beautiful lights, and they would glow. And yeah, you could. Serve popcorn in them. <laughs> you are such a beautiful artist on and off the bike. Um, I know you have a dancing background before, and I never saw anyone dance on pedals like you. So we are just, <laughs> and this art you've been, I know. Damn, Allie, that was strong. <laughs> Sorry. Strongest quote of the tour. <laughs> cool. Marianne, thank you oh, so much for being here. JB oh. had one last question. JB. We want, uh, prize money. Yo, this is, and this is also included in the CNN article. Mm -hmm. So, that year, 1984, the great Laurent Fillon wins the men's tour. Um, may he rest in peace. He was a he was a great rider and a great and a, and a great friend to me when I was a young rider. Just just FYI, uh, he, he wins two hundred twenty five thousand dollars. You, of course, you have to basically get yourself there. You win a thousand bucks. Something with I did win a thousand dollars, and then we shared that. <laughs> That was, you're like, they go out to dinner and like, well, I guess we better chip in some more. This didn't cover it in Paris. <laughs> you know, I was, I was so excited to be there and I had no expectations and I, all I wanted to do was race my bike yeah. and I funded it with a credit card and paid it off later and did exactly what I wanted to do. Yeah. Oh, Amazing. God. Legend. You are such a legend. Um, thank you again for uh, joining us. And Lance is going to go buy some of your photos, I think. He's been stalking yeah, you online. Right with the, yeah. you're, uh, <laughs> you're an amazing artist, like I said. So we appreciate you having here. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's have, great to be here. Have a great yeah. day. All right. You too. Thanks. So in bits, That's less than $100 a day. I mean, when you think about it, 18 days. Oh, yeah. I mean... It's much less that's, than eighteen. Well, that's what I mean. It's not even a hundred dollars a day for yeah. the whole team. <laughs> a little bit oh, of business. Today's show also brought to you by Roca, making the best product out there. Whether it's on the sunglass side, the prescription side, uh, we rock. Or I, these ladies, I'm working on them. I'm working on them. But uh, this is my go-to. Uh, super lightweight. Got the no slip. The best optics on the market, hands down. Uh, custom built in our hometown of Austin, Texas, where this uh, this whole madness began. Uh, and they look badass. You're seeing them in the in the Peloton with SD Works. You saw the stage win yesterday. I'm still waiting on that pair. Hello, Rob. I need that pair. 
they look super dope on TV. A special offer for our listeners, 20% off. Head on over to Roka. That's R-O-K-A dot com. And, uh, oh, sorry, the, the checkout code is the move. Also today brought to you by Wahoo. What a suite of products. You've got, uh, the indoor kicker, uh, smart trainer. You've got the rival sports watch, which of course is, uh, permanently installed on my wrist, uh, the bolt GPS bike computer. And now a new addition, the speed play pedals, which also includes the power link zero, which is, a uh, a way to measure power. And we're going to talk about power later on in the show. Cause I think y'all are going to be surprised at some of the numbers uh, that some of these riders can put out on the climbs. Cause I know so many people geek out, not me anymore, but they geek out on wattage, but uh, the power link uh, zero helps you uh, uh, get real time wattage on the pedal. So head on over to Wahoo. That's W A H O O fitness. That's Wahoo fitness.com. Yeah. That was just, how special was that to have so Mariana? Special. What a sweetie. Oh my goodness. I, yeah. She thinks I'm, she thinks I'm kidding. I'll be calling when I get to Boulder. You That's definitely, awesome. um, ah. I hope I can join. And then there's just, it's been amazing. So as we dive in today's show, it's been amazing to watch the progression from Marianne Martin winning the first Tour de France Femme, 1984 Lance. Yep. Agreed. Um, <laughs> and then you have Mari racing the Grand Boucol. Yep. <laughs> Me, and then I raced La Course and La Route de France. And so we did talk about uh, Mariana Voss. Uh, definitely lobbying. lobbying. And let's just give credit to Chrissy Wellington, who is world champion triathlete. Yep. Um, Emma also, Pooley. Also a boss. Yeah. yeah. Like legit boss. <laughs> For those who don't follow triathlon, Chrissy Wellington would, in, in full Ironmans would finish top 10. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Overall. And then she just dropped the mic, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. She, she yeah, won she everything. Just, yeah, and, exactly. And then she lobbied for equality in women's cycling. So you have Chrissy Wellington, Emma Pooley, who's Olympic medalist, Marianne Voss, of course, and Catherine Bertine. So, yeah. and this is where now, why we are now where we are today. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, and we are going to get into the stage, uh, the action for, there's a lot of action for a day that we, you know, you would tend to think would be rather uneventful. It wasn't. Um, if the opportunity was there, as Marianne said, would y'all, and this is a question for both of y'all, as opposed to having the, the, the women's tour the week after the men's tour, what if they came to you and said, okay, here's 10 days, same stages. Cause I love this idea of, look, you've already got the fans embedded, you know, and not obviously not have a 30 mile stage. They've got the roads closed, right? Well, could you, what would you think of that as, you know, and, and enjoying running them in tandem basically, uh, or do, or is it better to have it completely separate? I mean, I think it would be amazing to have them, you know, run together. I just think the the logistics of it might be yep. so challenging that um, it would be harder on the harder on the athletes and stuff. Um, in that the women wouldn't get as much of a stage in the media as they are when it's separate. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you? What are your thoughts, Al? I um, I've raced Flanders, Flesh, Yent, Welbegum. You know, uh, these races that we run in concurrence with the men, and I love it. Right. I mean, you're doing Flanders. And you can just taste the brats and the beer and like right <laughs> afterwards, like you got like Consolar or Gilbert coming by. Like, I think it increases the fans and the roads are closed. And I do like the separate story and I understand that angle, mm -hmm. but I love just bringing fans just to celebrate cycling in this monumentous moment. I, I think, I, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, I, I do think it would be incredible if you could pull it off. You know, I, I think some of the issues would be that the transfers would end up being a lot longer because you'd be cutting out part of what the men are doing and then you'd have to get to a separate start to, to run it, a, you know, a shorter race, whatever that would be. But I mean, the idea of racing on the same roads as the guys and having those fans like on Alp Duos or, you know, any of those climbs would be incredible. Cause well, yeah, it's expensive to close roads. It's, you know, but I don't feel like this is like the Tour de France hangover going on right now. No, this is no, a mother no, 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 bike race. No, that's why, no, no, legit. It was just a question, but, and, and I think, uh, as, as I view or just watch the women's race now, I mean, it is a much bigger deal. I don't, which is a compliment. I don't know if you could actually pull off two big deals. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it was uh, a much smaller Peloton and the, um, the personnel was a lot smaller and yeah, you know, maybe, but th this is, and I think it's a, as I said, it's a compliment that may not be possible because now it's, it's we're so seeing how grand it is. Well, and the oh, fact that yeah. like, you know how some of those towns are where you're finishing in and the amount of buses that you can get in there and staff, et cetera, I think it would be really difficult. I mean, if, if you could pull it off, it would be incredible, but it, I think ch it would be super challenging. Yeah. Should we talk about the stage? Oh, <laughs> oh guys, we raced bikes today. Yeah. <laughs> another, yet another stage win, uh, by Lorena. Um, we said that, that, uh, 
totally dominant. Don't want to get in a bar fight with her. No, oh, no. this is that, that, that finish line <laughs> shot. The gun show, you could end just the power in the sprint. I mean, it was, I think, won by a couple bike links. Oh. Pure sprinter, gorgeous finish. Mm. I'm terrified. You were intimidated too. No. Yeah, let's look at this. I mean, Watch she this. jumps. It's just, people when are like, when did she get yeah, a sprint? Right, she when she decides to go, she goes, look at this. Twice as fast. Now, of course... Uh, oh. Watch the finish and watch the finish here. How how dominant is she? Once again, no bar fights. No. Oh, you're, oh, oh I'm so, still scared. So psyched. Oh, she's amazing. Of course, this was not uh, uh, that straight. It looked pretty straightforward right there. But if we re rewind, you know, another five, six hundred meters uh, in the last chicane, this I, oh. this I have never seen in a sprint of any tour. Oh, my beautiful. So it was so lucky that Marianne didn't it, crash. There. That was so lucky. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know if she yeah. had to hit the brakes. It, 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 many of us have been on group rides when you, there's just a miscommunication. You mm -hmm. think somebody's going straight. Meanwhile, somebody thinks they're going left. It never ends well. That's exactly what could have happened here. I suspect she had to hit the brakes just because if, if you're even remotely touching wheels, everybody goes down. We missed, we dodged a big one there. Yeah, so for those of you that don't see it on the YouTube and aren't watching online, what happened is Elisa Longo Bergini, which we like Lamborghini, is at least my personal favorite. She was leading out her teammate, world champion, Elisa Balsamo. She's on the front and she takes a left in front of the entire group, full gas sprint into the deviation instead of heading down the finishing chute. And... Boy, you could, it could have been bad. Boss is on her wheel. Bad. It could have just been the worst pile up. They all would have gone down. I mean, and going that fast, yeah. that close to the finish. Which, unfortunately, she is the GC contender for Trek Sega Fredo, uh, Lisa Longo Bergini, and she lost nine seconds with that because she has to flip it and reverse it. Right. <laughs> well, the, as, and as, as is with the men's race, there is this three kilometer rule. If there's a crash and you're caught behind it, you get same time. Well, if you if you make a mistake like that and miss a turn, that didn't count. So she she was already down four. She lost an additional nine. She's now down thirteen, which is so unfortunate yeah. for her. I mean, I, and I mean, she was hate, doing a beautiful you, lead out until she went the wrong you, way. You don't even want to play it out. Like you, <laughs> no. mean, you get to the end of Sunday and you're like, yeah, you just lost by twelve seconds. I mean, it's one of those moments where you're just like, oh, and she's such a beautiful rider. So um, I'm sure they're going to protest it, but uh, we we're pretty sure the UCI rules. Well, speaking of UCI rules, though, we have... Well, speaking of protest. Yeah. Oh, so uh, we're, we're in with some... We saw a DQ today. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, they came on the telly and said, uh, uh, Barbara Malcotti has been disqualified. And here I'm thinking, wow, that, did, we, did, we, did I miss a fight? Mm -hmm. did, did somebody yeah, we make another out what really, happened. really big mistake to, to kick somebody out of the Tour de France? Yeah, and the words were like irregular, and we didn't know. So we texted our friend, Joanne Kazanowski, an Olympian, who's a director for Human Powered Health. She's a mm -hmm. Kiwi. She's lovely. But basically, it was an irregular bike change. Mari, I mean, you can... Yeah, it was It was a crazy situation where she was up with the brake, and uh, Marcotte in the back needed a, needed a new a new bike. So they gave it to the mechanic and she ended up changing in front of the, when the Peloton reached the mechanic. So the mechanic was by the side of the road with her bike and she changed it when he got there and they ended up kicking her out of the race for that irregular change. That, yeah. It, it's, in, that's, it's insane. Uh, that's extreme. <laughs> yeah. And of course we've heard that they filed a protest, which was denied. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, I don't think, I mean, this is, this is the kind of stuff that the UCI and like, if you, if you just sort of back up, like why, you know, why disqualifies? I mean, why, why is that even a penalty? Well, I mean, you could say that the, a, a mechanic giving a, a new bike to a rider is, is getting in the road or, or getting in the way of other riders, but come on. And the thing is, as Joanne, our, the DS of Human Powered Health, is following this amazing break, which we saw did an incredible job. So they're holding off the Peloton within 3K to go. Her rider is from Cyprus, and I think she's mm -hmm. like one of the first professional riders from Cyprus. Mm -hmm. So she went to the Olympics in 2016 and 2020. So obviously the team car is up with her rider in the break with it's mm -hmm. over a minute. Or at that at that point when they did the bike change, I think Joanne said it's three. They were three thirty ahead, mm -hmm. so she dropped off the spare bike for a rider that needed a bike, um, and she's like, "Please, just give me a fine. Like, give yeah. me a right. fine. Kick me out of the race, but don't kick my rider out of the race." And and also, I mean, imagine being the mechanic, because you could almost argue that the mechanic should know that, like, "Hey, I can't. You know, let's just slip back a little bit or whatever." But the mechanic's got to feel terrible. Yeah, and to kick a rider out for just getting oh. a bike change. Yeah. Definitely, I, you would think it would have been a fine of some sort and not uh, DQing an, an athlete. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, 
It and, and, and they and they and they um, they were, they didn't. Uh, I mean, they protested, but they were denied. That's yeah, they were denied, fact. and yeah. it's just yeah. And they were three thirty up the road, three minutes and thirty seconds up yeah. the road with our amazing break. That almost they did a great fight. So, well, which also brings up a good point because uh, in the men's race, uh, each team has two cars. Yeah. Are we? That's why I guess what I'm hearing is in in this race, there's only one car per well, team. Well, that's what I was wondering, too. Right. There must be only one car because, Has I mean, be. otherwise she sh- would have Just had to gone drop to the back. Second car yeah. two. Yep. I mean, when you have a rider up in the break, team car, or, or, or maybe even team car two goes up to the break, mm-hmm. um, and team car one stays back just for this exact reasoning, that's a great point. I mean, we should check into that. I just texted her, so we'll see. Yeah. Damn, we're good. There couldn't have been. God, I said to myself, self. (laughs) (laughs) Also, though, it's hard. I mean, American team coming over, it's different, too. If your SD works, your whole service course is in Belgium and everything's drivable. But coming over as an American squad, like it is it is a little different how your service course looks. You're driving a rental. (laughs) Potentially. But that definitely has happened. We just bring stickers. Just slap on some stickers. Of course, you sticker up a rental. (laughs) Uh, today's show also brought to you by Attitude. They are making, th- these sheets have changed the game for me when it comes to sleep. And ladies, FYI, I, I woke up this morning, walked downstairs. <laughs> All of our pajamas are laid out. They have arrived. Oh, wow. So we're going to do nice. a little pajama party. <laughs> that sounds really weird. <laughs> Is that finally when hey, I get my Bloody we were Mary? Wondering about hang on a second. <laughs> hang on, let me, let, me stop, let me start over. Hey, y'all want to have a pajama party? <laughs> Whoa, that's super weird. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we are going to do an Instagram live in our pajamas talking about the race like we did with George. Uh, this is, I gotta, stop, Lance. I got to ask Liz who's more photogenic, me or George. I know you already won that one. But. Uh, no, but anyway, they, they're legit. They're the best sheets I've ever been on. 17% at regulating body temperature, 24% more moisture wicking. And the process of making, you know, their technology called clean bamboo uh, is crazy. Uses 99% less water has uh, and 38% less carbon emissions. So you check it out. You could snooze sustainably. Um, don't forget 20% off your order, uh, plus free shipping for a limited time when you visit Etitude. That's E-T-T-I-T-I-T-U-T. I think I just misspelled that. Edit. It's like Attitude, <laughs> which wait. Allie has a lot of. <laughs> Etitude.com slash the move. And also there's a flow code if you're watching. Just hold your phone up. Uh, 20% off, plus free shipping. And I guess like this also, by the way, back to the stage, longest stage, longest stage. They, uh, so the UCI 10 miles. Yeah. And uh, UCI limit is 160 K and today was 174 ish K with also a 5 K neutral four to 5 K neutral. So, um, I did get some comments on, um, our channels that didn't get the ovary joke. Apparently they haven't been following us long, like long enough. I, Lance. I, like, I was, I'm disappointed when people don't get a joke. Whenever you start <laughs> to talk about these things, I just, I just put my head in my hands. I'm like, here comes the ovary joke. No, but it, it, it's just a rule that started when people didn't think that women could race a marathon. And yeah. so there are these just rules on the length of the race. And so UCI does have a limit. When I first started racing, it was 140 kilometers. And we have upped it a whole 20 kilometers to 160 kilometers. The other thing that was uh, crazy to see was this massive pile up um, with, with about 45K to go. You just... and it, Watch this. This is this stuff. This kind of stuff is cringeworthy, hard to watch. I mean, this is not just a crash. This is what it's, when they say pile up, this is what they mean. Rider. I mean, that must be 60, 70 riders spread all across the road. Uh, of course, lost some riders due to this crash. People in the ditches. And they're all tangled up. I mean, tangled. that's the thing. They're just like attached to each other. It's not like they went f- sliding anywhere. The they're one rider like, from uh, from EF couldn't get, I guess her foot got stuck in somebody's stuck in front wheel. wheel. Couldn't get the her foot out. I. <laughs> Whoa. I've never seen a crash like that before. I was just yelling at the top of my lungs mm-hmm. about the crash. You, which is not, that's nothing new. <laughs> Blaze ignores me, but you told me he just ignores my voice. <laughs> but it definitely took them a while to untangle right. themselves. I mean, it was not an easy thing to get, get out of that pile up. Yeah. No, it was a, that was a pretty wicked crash. Um, it didn't really, I mean, the, the Peloton did, I could see, take a little bit of a truce. People catch back on. Right. Chantel Block, our Vanderbilt Block, had a big gash on her. We heard the radio. She's like, he's like, get back in the Peloton. She's like, oh, my elbow is right. just bleeding profusely. She had a towel on it. Yeah. She's like, was putting a towel. I mean, she's a previous world champion. We know they're tough, but we don't want to glorify crashes. Right. Um, another rider of note in the break was Emily Newsom, who's p- placed third at Unbound, and mm-hmm. she's uh, from Texas. 
Oh, yep. home, home girl. <laughs> yep, she's home from girl. Texas. Um, she's a mother. Uh, oh. She's a seven year old. Oh, there we go. Oh, there's there's the, the oh the towel. Like she's just like I'm bleeding so much. Yikes. Hmm. Um, but yeah, so Emily Newsom from Texas, and she was in the break all day for EF, and she also is a concert pianist. So Ooh. if there's ever a piano in a hotel, she just starts playing and you just get the chills. It's just the most Does beautiful she really? thing. And she's got the most beautiful seven year old daughter that I love. Wow. I, I, I like them. Hey, this I mean, is these, good info. Yeah. These, no, these, these little <laughs> side stories and background <laughs> stories, I think are, uh, they're cool to hear. Mm-hmm. Um, at which point were you going to, uh, um, taunt our friends over at GCN and Eurosport, I'm Orla, s- Adam Blythe, Rob McEwen, Bradley Wiggins. Is I'm that so now? ready for this. I've been so ready. Cause we, okay. she's been waiting all week. <laughs> <laughs> I wore sequins. I wore sequins. And I, I, when I walked in, I was like, uh, whoa, what Mari, is going on? Mari told me it looked like um, the walk of shame. <laughs> okay. I'm about to pick this up, JB. Hope oh, it works. That's because it was seven got, in the morning when you put this on Allie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sequence, and um, I'm gonna try not to Wait, kick it what, off. What, what does that mean? Walk of shame. <laughs> Never mind. Oh snap! I mean, Orla wears the white pump. Orla, eat your heart out. But we've got my wedding boots. Oh, are those the ones you blew your knee out in? <laughs> oh, uh, no. no, that was a different pair. I own a lot of boots. We should get a boot sponsor for the show. Okay, we'll get on that. But I mean, so GCN is saying that we don't dress up enough. Right. So at six in the morning, I have sequins on. Yeah, but, but here's <laughs> I want to be like Orla. And here's the thing I would say to Orla and that whole crew. So, you know, it, what they, they have the set, they got the makeup people, the, the, the hair people, but they got to travel around. They got to go to every stage. They got to sit there. You know, what do we do? We're just, we sit in the same place every day. And we ride our bikes. And then we get done and we're like, well, what should we do now? Should we go ride our bikes and then come back to the very same place tomorrow? But I don't have hair and makeup or a wardrobe. (laughs) Would you better? I know. Blaze told me he's been helping you with that. (laughs) This Uh, is actually Liz's shirt. (laughs) We got some good questions and and, and some of them are not even questions. We'll touch on these and then we'll show tomorrow's stage. Uh, And then, um, but so uh, uh, our our listener, Matt says, been a fan of the show since stages. The show used to be called stages. Uh, The coverage of the femme has been awesome. Great rapport and insights. The move is the Mayo zone of tour coverage. Thanks, Matt. (laughs) Uh, This is a cool question. This comes from uh, Dan. He says, what kind of times and power do you think these women are going to be doing up the super planche de Belfi? The QOM on Strava is Clara Koppenberg at around 2643. If Annemiek can recover from her early tour woes, we have seen her do 24 to 25 minutes around at, at a wattage of 5.6 to 5.7 watts per kilo. And then he also says, fucking great show to the whole team. I also want some bibs. Swear jar. He says, I would like some bibs with chonky written on the ass. <laughs> I'm winning. But I am it, so winning. But is this right? I mean, f- because 5.6 to 5.7 watts per kilo for almost half an hour, folks. Mm-hmm. If, you're, if you're not one of these watt nerds, which I'm no longer, that is a lot. It's a lot. And I mean, but I've asked around, you know, to our coaches from the national team and stuff, and and they say that that is what is what she's doing. And um, but there are very few women who can do even 5.6 or 5.5 to 5.6. So and most will probably not most, but the second group on the road is probably 5.3 to 5.4. So that's why you guys were talking about. The, we the need peloton needing minutes. We need time. Got it. Okay. <laughs> that was that was insane. Highlight we've, reel. We've been on uh, oh, spending shit. too much time. Yeah. Together. We have been spending too much time. That's because you're, you're all, always together. <laughs> on you're always together. You never want to ride with me. Well, that's you're napping. Um, <laughs> on Amik, it does train with the movie star mm-hmm. men's team. Yeah. And before that, with Bike Exchange men's team, Orca Green Edge at the time. Somebody told me, and, I, and again, I don't know what to believe or not, um, that so Richie Port apparently puts in more kilometers than anybody else in the world for, or any other professional in the world. He just rides and rides and rides. Somebody told me that, that Anime uh, uh, is, is number two. Yep. She rides that many kilometers. He's talking about, you think she's worried about this long stage? She's like, shit. I ride with the boys, go 250K every day. But let's go back to uh, people you don't have to ride like pros to be fast either. So right. Marianne Martin being efficient in cycling and training right. is also okay. All the kilometers does not matter, but minutes. We need minutes on on a week. <laughs> minutes. Well, and now that she's getting a couple of days to kind of regroup again, I think we're going to see her being able to do some like big numbers at I the mean, end of the race. I mean, she avoided the big yeah. crash today. Yep. Which was I mean, a fantastic thing. That yep. was, yeah. not, many avoided, not many avoided the crash. She's no. only 118th. 
15 mm-hmm. down. Um, she's to your point, Mari, she's had a couple days to let the stomach bug either settle down or pass. Mm-hmm. And she's, uh, she's right there. Well, you know, and Mavi looked really good today too, considering the crash that she had. All smiles. Uh, I mean, I, was, all, I mean, she, she was, was she happy. Was smiling yeah. and she happy wasn't even bandaged up. Like Faulkner is more bandaged, yeah. bandaged up than Mavi mm-hmm. is. So yeah, I mean, she looked happy cool. out there. So she'll have another day to recover too before they hit the mountains. Let's have a gander at tomorrow's mm-hmm. stage. Oh, these names. <laughs> yeah. Where's Mel? Mel, we need you. No, we well, need she you. didn't tell me how to tomorrow. say Fom or Fem. So a little, little shorter <sighs> tomorrow. Again, one of these time bonus sprints uh, before the finish, uh, mid-stage. So two Cat 4s, a Cat 3, and a Cat 4, 129 kilometers. So uh, like about right, right around 80 miles. Uh, by the way, I don't even know the last time I rode 80 miles, but um, this is, this is, the, this is a, a, to me at least, and you all chime in, but this is another day where somebody like Van Vluten just has to avoid any all the GC favorites. Like You just got to get through tomorrow because Saturday, Sunday, we decide the race. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, they just need to get through it safely. Yeah. And I mean, the interesting thing is their teams are getting kind of beaten up from all these crashes and stuff too. So seeing what teams out there can protect their riders is going to be interesting. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think tomorrow my, my guess is going to be, it might be a little surprise for us. Really? People might want some time. Like it looks a little like lumpy, well, right? A little, it, it is a little, a little lumpy. lumpy. It looks a little lumpy. It's in that part of France with it's small roads. Te- very technical. And yep. it's those roads. You talk yep. about those roads, but yep. I know how slow they feel. Yeah. This chip seal. It's just I don't know. Yeah. Well, we watched Voss. We watched that whole like race hit the fan. Right. Notice me once again not swearing today. <sighs> you're doing a good job. Yeah. You're re- <laughs> it's impressive. You should hear her off <laughs> offline. It's a very different uh, vocabulary. But see, I don't have that. Uh, never mind. I'll talk about it. But all right. Well, it's going to be exciting. Got to get through tomorrow and then Saturday, Sunday. Boom, boom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We just watched the FOM. So thanks again to Zwift for being the title sponsor right. of the Women's Tour de FOM of Ed Zwift. And then make sure you guys check out that We Do segment. Yes. Lance loves this 4.1 mile hot lap. That's he does not <laughs> like prologues. He's no. sweating over there thinking about it. <laughs> Maybe we should get Lance doing it on his kicker. I, we actually well, we should. Be interesting. We should. We should log on and do it. I mean, it's summertime, but yes, we should. <laughs> I think it's, it's raining, raining today. <laughs> it is raining. Good point. All right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. We'll see you all thanks. tomorrow.